just a bit of cocking about time I've um, cleaned off that base which I've not touched other than a heavy stone in of course it's had what we call a few blunt traumas and there's a big patch of rust there which I've cleaned off I've used some of that um, what is it deox gel which has uh, worked a treat in that half an hour um, ignore that it's just sat on there out of the way at the minute um, if you I've, I've got a pair of parallels which I've checked and they're accurate to two tenths I've sat them on the on the V ways sorry on the dovetail ways that the ram slides in I've then sat my large parallel which is also accurate to a two tenths so we're now up to four tenths or plus or minus let's call it half a thou uh, I've set the um, spirit level on and you can see the bubbles just between the 0.5 sorry 0 0.05 millimeters and the millimeter line <clears throat> if I then take it off there and it's only just that thing's not had any work done to it yet that's pretty damn similar if I sit the parallel on there which is the carriage or cross slide I think we're calling it I'd say that was pretty much the same plane and then if I do the same I mean it might be out half a division it's a rough and ready setup but um, my feeling is that because I haven't adjusted the contact area on that gib and i'm getting the same contact now as i did when i first put it in and printed it i'm working on the basis of there ain't that much wrong with the alignment that way uh, what i'm trying to do is save i'm um, to make a jig to fix around wrap around there to have a straight edge on which i think can then put the box square up to so i'm reasonably happy that i can get up get my arse into gear and do the next bit now which is to seat this uh, and what I want to achieve is basically the top of this to be parallel in the same plane as that I've uh, run a DTI as a result of uh, one of the more clever chaps off uh, Practical Machinist that's more, more clever than me which is my rule of calibration <laughs> and he's recommended that I stick a DTI off there onto that face same on that side on that face and then from the bottom up and check that this thing is the same height from here to here as it is from bottom side and it is i can't find i can't measure a, a discernible difference bearing in mind that i can't measure the top and then go and do a comparative check to the bottom because of the changing angle from um suspending a, 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 a dti versus holding it upright um, gravity is a bit of a bitch on that front and uh, the general consensus is it'd be a lot easier if I had more room and some lifting apparatus and then uh, also do all of this work before painting it and before starting to rebuild it and uh, yeah I think that's uh, self-evident uh, but you know you live and learn um, the only reason I painted it was to make me feel as though I was uh, making some progress at least now I can see the progress in the form of new chips to new paint. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, reasonably happy that alignment issues are uh, not going to be a huge issue now. Um, my original concern when I tried to clamp the box section underneath the end of the V-ways on the ram was I was getting a hell of a lot of... Um, uh, it, was, it would seem to be a long way out of alignment with everything else. But uh, I don't think it's too far out. I mean, I'm going to take those two parallels now with the other one sat on it and measure the total deviation. So 
I can rule out a compound of errors kind of thing or errors correcting a error on the machine. Does any of that make sense? And look, I've got about another four square feet now. I've cleared up some crap. Plenty of space to go up though. Still got to get rid of that lot and then start working. The only reason that's left up is uh, it's my workbench for when I start painting. Enough of me rambling on. So we're going to try and get the contact area on here better. There's a wear pattern basically around the outside of it. From what I can see. That section's worn and that section's worn. Um, can't see much under there but there's the sign of some kind of scraping but nothing visible as such as in terms of nothing significant left so i'm going to go over it all give it a, a rough uh, cross hatch and then i'm going to print it from the cross slide uh, i'll set set us up on a time lapse so you can uh, get the general idea again So you can see we're still picking up there. And that is the mounting point. It's location point left and right. And uh, other than that, I don't think it does anything. It's in clear space inside the, uh, uh, what do you call it, the, the carriage. So it's only it's only providing that register that way. So I might do something a bit more aggressive and take that down if I'm going to carry on trying to use the plate to print. Uh, that's going to be a pain in the ass. So, uh, shall have a think. Don't kick the cat. Not sure what happened there. No ink on that, but we're getting a good spread otherwise. Now what I could do is set it down on its face and DTI it and just see how high they are, but uh, the other face is, is pretty crappy. So I'm not sure I could get it perfectly square down. Yeah, I'll have a think. Right, <clears throat> anywhere is a precisionist, look away. I'll stick my 12 inch ruler across and sight through. I'm flat here, flat here, and flat here. I, I can't see daylight. So the fact that it's sitting up on there would suggest it's less than a, less than a thou. And I would suggest it's less than half a thou. So I think I'm just gonna give it a heavy scraping, get these two pads down so that the plate will then sit across this section and on the front lip of that so I won't bore you with that because that's going to be tedious well, a bit of judicious filing and then scraped it off and so stoned it those are now about a thou below this surface roughly um, so that's the, the last print so we're picking here and here and it's pivoting basically somewhere here probably that point and then on that point so drop that down until we get it basically so it will pivot evenly not much more to say
The only problem I have, or one of, <laughs> only, I wished, one of the problems I have with doing this, the um, pivoting is fine when you've got a, a decent sized flat surface area to go at. But if you look at this, if you've got a strip here and a couple of points, now in theory, as I understand it, the pivoting should be somewhere between 20 and 30% in from each side. So you would suggest there and there. But it can't pivot there and there without anything to pivot on. Or have I completely missed the plot? It probably does, but it doesn't compute in my brain. So we keep going until we get uh, something pivoting around there. I guess it, it will, but yeah, don't know. My jibber on, just re rolling the ink on the plate. Oh, crunch, 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 Richard had shout at us. There. As Richard pointed out in one of the earlier videos on his uh, comment, you've got to use your ears as well as your eyes and your fingers. And crunching isn't a good sound. Try again. Pivot in there. Pivot in there. And yet when you look at it, it looks reasonably even distribution, but it is that the, the spots in that area are a little bit darker than that area. And there's something there as well. I think before I go further, I'm going to clean this off and then print it on the carriage. Running out of compressed air. Just roll the ink on the carriage again. <sighs> yeah, remember what I said about having a consistent lift? <laughs> Try it.
then with a consistent lift you need a consistent sliding it about Ooh, dear. Right, I'll bring you out the uh, clamp so obviously the bit we've took off is now low but we've started to encroach back into the wear section as was and then on the underside clearly those pads are a bit high um, but there's nothing in that area so I'm gonna quit using the plate and just print it off the carriage I think because the plate can't cover the whole area and I can't get a consistent print without a lot of pissing about so I might as well print it to the part it's going to I don't know whether you heard that because I'd be hand over the speaker Duh. Well, on reflection um, <coughs> I uh, gravity ain't working with me on this I'm having to hook the piece over and then push it in against and then move it left and right consistently without rocking it that way or rocking it that way so I'm going to take the carriage off the column lay it on its back and then at least I've got gravity pulling the plate pulling the part onto those surfaces flat and even so all I've then got to do is do a linear motion as a rub um, which should give me more consistency and make the whole lot a bit easier um, so I've got to clear some space and then unbolt the thing and stick it on the bench like I say it pays to think things through uh, I was working on the basis of that being nice comfortable working height behind where I'm working it's yeah wrong if I remember when I'm editing, I'll stick up the picture, the still shot of the print immediately before this. And I've done nothing other than clean it off and print it on the carriage, which is sat flat now. So I've got gravity working with me. Not a huge deal of difference, but there's enough which when you get to a, a, a flatter surface, there's enough of a difference to make you step back a few times. You go forward and then you have an inconsistent print and you've got to clean it all off print it again and try and work out was it inconsistent or is it is it shifted because you've removed the wrong stuff um so anything you can do to give you more consistency and repeatability in my view has got to be a good thing um and i'm still learning so we're gonna basically keep just keep, keep hitting the blue now and taking it down until we get a uh, much better coverage Right, uh, I've re-inked the carriage, so it's actually a heavier inking on the carriage. Um, I'll bring you in for a bit more close-up shot. Uh, so one of the other problems that I have, apart from um, rotating the, the plate and getting it to pivot, is reading the markings. And what you're looking for is a density of colour variation. So you can see you've got in this section you've got so let's say that one there. You've got a, a shiny, shinier spot surrounded by progressively darker blue. And that I understand means let's let's call that a medium height. Whereas this one here where you've got a darker grey surrounded by increasingly dark blue is a very high spot. For some reason it goes dark grey when it's a very thin film as opposed to you know other areas where there's no bloody ink then when you start talking about into recesses where you've not got the same light bouncing around i mean those are 
clearly darker spots. Get me a big podger in there. Uh, where are we? There. They're clearly darker, darker areas. But is that darker because it's higher, or is that darker because there's just more ink in there? And you've not got the light penetrating it. I don't know. So I get to a stage where I, I just can't, I can't pick out the differences. So I'm looking then for a getting an even distribution. And I think that's the shortcomings of lack of experience and lack of any proper training doing this. So if you're watching this to try and learn something, <coughs> Switch to another channel. Anyway, uh, still go up working on the basis of anywhere that's got blue on it, remove it until we've got blue everywhere. Bit heavy on the ink. You can see the darker areas. That's what happens when you don't get all every last trace of um, white spirit off. And it's cocked it up in that area as well. So we'll clean it off and do it again. Meanwhile, 20 minutes later, by the magic of cinematography, uh, we've got, so we've got a print um, without any crunchy sounds and without any white spirit. But you can clearly see the, the white polished areas, a few darker areas there, a few more darker areas along there and in that area and up there. And then just a load of ink. A few darker areas at the back in there. And on that corner. And difficult to tell on those. And um, what I've found is there's absolutely zip all relief. There's my podger. No relief there or there. Um, there's a tiny little row, uh, fillet I've put on that top edge just to break the corner and I think some of the crunching noise is where that corner internal corner there hasn't been cleaned out and I can't when I put my big podger in I can't get I mean that's rammed in hard now I can't get into the corner with my big podger to feel it <laughs> <clears throat> so we'll be training up one of the children to do the uh, finger wiping exercise. I mean, <clears throat> we'll be looking at an alternative method of cleaning it out. <laughs> yeah. Hey ho. I'll try and show you a print. Sorry for the obscure camera angle. OK. 
can hear crunch as it goes down, so there's shit in there. So we'll do that one again. Is infuriating when you can't actually but I uh, crushed the end of that finger many years ago it was uh, from there sh there forward it was an eighth of an inch thick so I ain't got a lot of nerve endings in there and the others aren't up to much either well can't it can't feel anything Even the chickens are commenting. That's better. So this one's just pushing it to make sure it doesn't pivot around. That's about an inch and a half movement. seasick now so we're moving from there to there that's the left hand pad which would be the right hand as we're looking at it upturned uh, there's a little bit of a witness there That's not looking too shabby. So there's our pickup on our right side. So when that's over, that's not the side that we can see the ink wiped off. A little bit there. And you can see the hard on along the top edge there. So I need something to get into that corner and either create myself a bit of clearance. But you can see there's still it's picking there and not towards the front edge, so I'm obviously not clearing it out cleanly when I'm uh, scraping up. And these are dark areas. That want some addressing. Right, we'll get on with doing that. Well, I've just spent 10 minutes scraping in that little tiny relief you can see in the corner there. Uh, above, top not touch the top one. And then I've reprinted it from that. And it's took out. Let's improve things, but uh, it's obviously now I can get. I can see where I'm going at. Um, scraped it out with that, which is a turning tool. Guild knows what it was used for. But it's got a nice tight radius on the end, and it's carbide, so it uh, holds up. So I'm going to work down the blues now and uh, see if I can get a, a better print. This bottom section's not bad, it's still a bit hard along this bottom edge and this bottom corner here. Um, this seems to be high here and the back and a little bit there so I'm just going to hit the blues and take them there I'm not going to bother recording it because my phone my battery's about dead so that's the print 
after removing the dark areas I went through on the previous one. Now obviously there's less ink on the, uh, the surface that I'm printing from because I haven't re-inked it, I've just redistributed it. But it still looks to me to be getting hard along this bottom edge and then a few more areas up there and then in there down the top edge around these edges so we'll go do the same again we we'll persevered there's even less ink on the plate now and if you remember it was this area outside of that that was all worn and this area was pretty much original and then this area was worn so my thinking was get it all back to level which I've done and then sink the center section well two passes so I've done a row that way and a row that way so it's around about three maybe four tenths below the highest points on here and what I'm thinking is that that will then wear down to give me virtually full contact um, and a similar kind of thing here I don't think that's 18 to 20 dots per inch but it's uh, it isn't exactly moving at high rate of knots is it um, struggled with a burr on here uh, I've stoned it excessively and now I've got a shallow spot and on there so I might just go back over it and uh, just knock off those high points to see if I can bring in a little bit more but in terms of being level and not humped it's uh well, I'm, I'm, I'm reasonably happy that that's uh, perfectly adequate. Um, getting a few comments on the Practical Machinist thread and uh, one or two via the videos at various points saying uh, I'm going over the top in areas that it doesn't need it. Um, the problem is I can't correlate the comment to the part of the video so I could do with a bit more information. There are certainly things that I've done which didn't need doing. Um, uh, maybe I'm developing the surface points more than they need to be. I mean, given that none of this was scraped originally, or if it was, it was literally oil pocket scrape. You saw them, they're about um, full width. Um, so I don't know, it'd be interesting to know a bit more. I think I'm going to call that it. So the wear, wear area has got the highest contact points and these are just coming through. I mean if I put more ink on the plate it would be a blue, you know, flat blue all the way across. So I'm happy that that's uh, adequate. So the next job is to do the, the what would effectively be the top of it when it's hanging. Um, which means I've got to come up with some method of scraping it. Um, one of the comments come from the Practical Machinist again was um, I need to make up a pool scraper. Uh, so I need to have a look at I'm going to do that because it is tight and then uh, once that's on I can have a look at flaking them uh, I think this area and what I can get at in there will want some kind of flaking as opposed to the faces of that as I understand it you flake the areas which don't get exposed and that uh, saddle moves across but it also goes off two inches to give you the 14 inches either side of centre 
So, um, given that it's got wipers and the chances of me running that full width, I, I will I'll look at scraping it all. I had a bit of a mess about, but you can't quite see it because they're only shallow. No, you can't. I'll have to blue it over and show, do it again. But yeah, that's going to take some practice, I think. This is a pain in the arse. It's a pretty bad casting floor. Well, no, there's a casting floor in there. Uh, I've took out the hump in the middle. Um, I'm getting a reasonable print. I'm uh, rotating around there and there, which is a little bit far out. Uh, I'm scratching away with that weapon of choice. And then an old, uh, oh, I don't know, it's not, ca it's not a tungsten carbide, so high speed steel or even high carbon steel. I get about one cycle out of it and then I redress the edge on diamond stone. It ain't easy and it ain't pretty. But I think it'll be functional. So I'm going to uh, keep hitting the blues until I get a, a, a more even hit uh, print. And then I think that'll do on there. So that's the first print off the uh, actual carriage. I mean, you can ignore this. I'm not trying to print that, but at least you get a, an idea of how it's hitting. Um, down in the boxway, you've got a fairly big blank area where I've dropped it below the original worn, uh, un, or less worn surface than the others. It's picking up on either end. So I'm going to keep hitting this near lot of blue until I just get a print at either end. And then I'll gradually take those back so they extend in towards the middle. What's the plan? Meanwhile, there's a cheese sandwich calling for me, which I'll have to go and rescue, otherwise it'll get bored. So this is the print from the first time I actually had it. The cross slide on the shaper. Hung it on and I've moved it an inch and a half. So three quarters of an inch each way. It's hard on at this end. Um, there's some darker spots in the middle there. Not so much in that area. So we'll just keep working it through. I uh, don't think I'm even giving a shit about getting the nice little cross hatches. <coughs> I think as long as it's got reasonable contact, I don't bother what it looks like because it is. I'm finding it really hard to get um, well, a to shift material. Um, and next is impossible to get any kind, any kind of rhythm going, just because of the lack of space and poor equipment. Nothing to do with my skill, boys. Uh, that's the scraper I'm using, which, as you know, is an old turning tool brazed um, I can do within I don't know three sixteenths of that that face maybe maybe an eighth don't know. Um, and then I'm basically bumping bumping hard against the heel um, the geometry of it's not right it ain't right it's far from ideal the, um, the little eclipse scraper works but uh, again i can't really shift any any amount of material with it so it'd be all right for picking it out so we'll probably end up just using that anyway i mumble on school run time so that's me done for the uh, afternoon till i get back
I'm going to call that the final pass. I've just broken it up. And like I say, it ain't clean, it ain't clean, it ain't tidy, but I've got a bit of depth on them. But I broke my finger in the foot process. Uh, then I'll deburr it, in, take the ink off, do one more print, just see how it looks. Well, I started out saying it ain't going to be pretty and uh, functional, I think, is the word for the day. You know, there's a, there's a, there's a few pockets in there for oil. It's a reasonably flat plane. I'm happy with that. Thank God it wasn't longer. Imagine doing that on something like a 36 inch scra uh, shaper. <coughs> I'd have been inserting one. So that's as it's finished. As I say, not very pretty. But the, the ends that are going to wear, they've got plenty of contact points. Middles. <laughs> yeah. You can probably pick out a bit on the middle. Anyway, I'm happy to leave that as it is now. Get the oil away in it and call it done. Pondering on how to do the uh, oil way. I don't know if you can see, but if you take the base of the the way there and the base of the T slots, that ain't a lot of meat. Meat, so I can't sink a head into that and lose it. Which means it's got to go in either through the top, or I've got to go in in somewhere here, and then drill to meet it that way and that'll be fun um, I don't want to put it in the middle because you can't physically get to the thing and I don't want anything hanging out the back and poke, poke it up sure this is a bit of a conundrum I mean I could stick something on the back here but that's only going to squirt, squirt it onto this face Unless I was really cunning in me, uh, mind you, the gib slides there anyway. On the face there, but I, I can't get a drill in to meet it that way. So I think it, it can only be somewhere on there, and then drill up to meet it. Unless I can come up with a cunning way of setting my angle on the drill to drill through so it picks up in that corner, and then put a channel out diagonally from the corner which would be on the top edge of the gib I mean given it as an add one anything's going to be an improvement answers in the comments below I'm going to go in I'm going to rescue a cheese sandwich and provide it to home for the next 24 hours and uh, see how many of these will download and then upload after editing.